I received a request to take a closer look at the horizontal drive control that I replaced. If you recall, it seemed like every time the fuse blew, it's when I was adjusting this control, and I suspected there might be tin, whister, tin whiskers inside, causing the body to short to an element inside. The body being grounded would ground out the elements inside and cause problems. But I can't see any direct evidence of that from the outside. It would have to be some kind of like metal tendrils going from the body to one of these points, and I don't really see that. So, let's see what's going on inside. Now, it might, even, not, might not even be uh, tin whiskers, it could just be debris, a, a bit of solder or wire or something might have gotten down inside there. Luckily, it's a common enough value, just a one meg pot, so I was able to easily replace it. Hmm. Don't really see any issues in here. Now I also replaced a couple other things. There was a resistor that drifted off value. And I replaced that. Checking the carbon tracks now for any open spots. There's a bit of a Shiny man, not really. Just a slight difference right there versus the rest, but I mean, the, I can't imagine that would cause any problems. So, I don't know. Don't see any debris, don't see any tin whiskers. So, maybe it was something else. That could have also been a bit of solder or a bit of a clipped off lead that was floating around underneath the chassis and from me moving it around it got dislodged and that could have solved the problem too. I, mean, I suppose at this point we'll never know. I'm just glad the fuses aren't blowing anymore. After a bit of hunting around I finally found another yoke from a KCS 47 just like the one that I've been trying to use on this K part. Should look familiar. It's got the same type of plug on the end that I'll cut off and that same wire that's taped off. Now that may be a bad thing because this may be exactly the same model number yoke and it's going to work exactly the same way but I guess that would at least tell me that the yoke I've been using is not defective and uh, if it doesn't work in exactly the same way well what does that mean? Well it could mean that this yoke just is not compatible enough or that there's a problem somewhere else. Now, I also dug through my stash of new old stock yokes and I got a 10 and I got an 11. Nice shiny unused yokes. I don't know how compatible they are though. They do list some info on the side like the inductance and the resistance and they are both 70 degrees, which is what I do need for this set. And they include a, bit, a little bit of paperwork inside, so I can see the internal design. And I can tell you, from looking at that, that neither one has a 270 picofarad cap inside, like uh, the original for this K-part did. It does have the 56, but not the 270. Of course, I could always add one if need be. It's also got 560 ohm across the vertical, which I do not show, I don't think. Yeah, the K-part doesn't show those. Now notice this is another one. Uh, again, I have numerous versions of schematics for this CX-33 type chassis. And this yoke's a little bit different. It shows a 56 with a 10K in series and no 270. Huh. So, I'm not sure what that all means exactly. Yeah, same deal on this one. This one that shows a one meg resistor. Uh, so I go figure. Ah, uh, they probably used. Okay, and this is a 20 inch pitcher tube, not a 16. So I suspect they used a number of different yokes over time. So uh, maybe it's not so crazy to try one of these after all. If I do, I will try the one with the larger inductance and resistance which I believe is the Y10 
Yeah, this has much lower resistance. My fear is that if I go with one that's too low resistance, I'll burn out the flyback as this goes in series with it, and I don't want to risk damaging anything else by using one that's very uh, that varies widely from the original specs. Here it is with the other RCA yoke, which also has a Y17 marked on the side, and the internal structure looked to be identical with the same two ceramic caps. And after a bit of tweaking, I am up to a little under 10,000 volts, so we're getting better, we're getting better. Which makes me think that there's nothing wrong with the other yoke. And that these yokes are probably very close to the originals, but just not quite right. And it's limiting things a little bit. Now the full-size CRT will draw a bit more current for the high voltage, which will probably make it drop a little bit. So maybe like 30, 35% low on the high voltage. I'm guessing so. I wonder if I could tweak some uh, component in here to increase the power going through this a little bit. See these older designs actually have a resistor in series with the horizontal windings. A 1200 ohm shunted by a width control and this that's just a dead short. Uh, otherwise that would obviously be something to tinker around with. Now I am thinking if I try one of those other yokes I will uh, at least temporarily put that with control back in, which will give me some safety margin in case it's drawing too much current. Well, and of course, I've also got the fuse, so I'm not really that concerned about the flyback getting burned out. Um, but uh, that would actually be a good thing if this maybe has a lower impedance and it's drawing a little bit too much power, and I can uh, add a with control. There's already a hole for it right here, and a with control I think might be something handy to have in addition to the drive control. Now another possibility I've kind of been ignoring a little bit is this linearity control, and I have tweaked it a bit, and it has a profound impact on the linearity, and it impacts the high voltage a bit. So I'm going to play around with that a little bit more right now. You loosen this up, and you slide this back and forth. Let's see if I can show you what's happening on the screen here when I do that. So now it's kind of crunched a bit. That's stretched out, crunched, stretched out. I slide this back and forth. Now, if that linearity control um, is shorted or something, that could cause a problem. It's right in here. Seems to be okay, though. I mean, physically, I don't have an inductance meter to check it, but I can check uh, the 24 ohms. Of resistance it's indicated on the schematic at least. What I think I'll try next is to do experiment with component values a little bit. I still have the second RCA Y17 flyback in there. What I want to do is try using some of the component values I see in earlier versions of the schematic. The one that matches mine is the last page in the K-Part service info. They seem to have three versions of the CX-33 chassis. The version I have does not have a width control. This right here is just a straight wire connection. Also, in mine, instead of a single 4 watt 220 ohm resistor, there are two 220 ohm 2 watt resistors in parallel and up here to 18k 1 watts in parallel, where here it's 27k and 22k. In other words, this is a little bit higher resistance in the screen voltage and higher in the cathode. Let's check out another version. No, no, here's one that matches what I have. Dual 220s in parallel and dual 18ks in parallel. So I imagine this would have a higher screen voltage and a lower cathode resistor. So I would think that there'd be more power going through this variation. But uh, I'll certainly try increasing those values. Let's see, I should have a little more handy. It's from the SAMs. 
Okay, here we're back to a single 220 and a 22 and a 27 in parallel. Huh. So, um, one thing I want to do is I want to put a width control in, or at least throw a power resistor in there. There is a hole in the chassis with a plug, so I could easily mount the pot in there. But uh, before I do that, I might just throw in a power resistor. So they show 1200 ohms shunted by a 250 ohm control. So this could basically go from zero to whatever 1200 in parallel with 250 would be. I'll be a little, maybe 200 ohms, so zero to 200 ohms, I'm guessing, in that circuit. So maybe I'll throw a 100 ohm in just to see what effect it has. And uh, I can try increasing the resistance on both the cathode and the screen. But first I'll just try doing the width by itself. There's an unused lug on the terminal strip right here, so it made it easy enough to move this wire over from this point to here and tack in a 100 watt, 100 ohm 3 watt resistor. But I uh, really didn't have any noticeable effect. The high voltage uh, seems to be exactly the same. And if it altered the width much, I, I couldn't notice. So, uh, I guess next up it's time to tinker with the other values. Here are the two 18K in parallel, and here are the two 220 ohm in parallel. Well, unfortunately, going with the 27 and 22K in parallel and the 220 ohm on the cathode actually made things worse, down to only about 7.25 kilovolts now. So I think I'm going to tinker around with the values a bit more and see if I can squeeze some more high voltage out of this. Well, I tried different component values, and unfortunately everything I tried made things a little bit worse. So I just put it back to the way it was. Two 220s in parallel and two 18Ks in parallel. So where does that leave me? Well, high voltage is still about 30 to 40 percent too low. Last few things I have not replaced are not easy to do. The ceramic 30 picofarad high voltage cap here, I just don't have a replacement on hand. But I can order one up. The original was 30 picofarad, modern I can get a 27 or a 33. And next time I place an order, I, I will get one. But right now I just don't need enough stuff to fill up an order to justify ordering just a couple disc capacitors. Another thing is a high voltage doorknob filter cap underneath the high voltage rectifier tube way back in the corner of the high voltage box. I've got spares, but it's really, really hard to get to. I have to take off this box, which has the flyback attached to it, so you either got to take disconnect the flyback support and kind of hold it supported in free space somehow, shim it up with some styrofoam or something, or um, disconnect the wires going to the flyback get this cover out of the way and then try to dig in from around this side hopefully the filter caps aren't in the way and last thing would be the flyback don't have a spare for that it's a fly dash two Thord Arson for the replacement type uh, fly dash twos I looked around briefly didn't see any anywhere but I can put out feelers to see if anybody has a spare they could uh, let me have, at least temporarily, just to borrow it to see if it makes any difference, and if not, I can send it back to them. Um, so, um, in the meantime, I'm going to get this off the workbench. I need a little break from it, I think. So, I think what I'll be doing next is a little Friday Night Radio restoration.